Deputy Brendan Howland. Uh, I know will have died by the Always treatment. does, Alaskan Over the period from January 2008 to October of this year, the consumer price index rose by 3%. So you might think that the cost of living has only risen marginally in that period, but Tonish, that would be a mistake. First and foremost, the Consumer Price Index is not a cost of living index. This has been forcibly stated by the CSO for years, but the message doesn't seem to have penetrated the minds of government officials. The CPI, as the name indicates, is a price index, and the fixed basket of goods and services are not those driving up the cost of living for people struggling. The main problem is the rise in rents. And for the Tonish to say that the rate of increase is diminishing, so that's all right then. And that rise is not distributed evenly across the country. CSO statistics from the rent Rental Tenancies Board confirm urban rises in rents of well over 20%, over 40% in some cases compared to 2008. Asked for rents across the country are 26% higher than at the Celtic Tiger peak, according to Daft. 26% higher than Celtic Tiger peak. Job opportunities are overwhelmingly concentrated in the towns and cities, and that's where the rent pressures are most acute. Rent pressure zones, which are meant to slow down rent increases to 4% a year, if you use compound uh, over the, the period of five years, that's 21.7%. Even where they're working, many areas they're not. But 21.7% increase in five years is not affordable. It's nothing linked to people's increase in wages over that period. So the solution to the affordability crisis in housing is, as the Tonish has rightly said, supply. But there is another side, and that is workers' pay, people's income. Ireland has a far larger share of workers on low incomes compared to other European countries. The Irish living wage is calculated on the basis of the actual cost of living facing people in both rural and urban areas. It is estimated that a single person working full-time would need to be paid €464 Euros a week in order to meet a basic standard of living. €464 Euros a week. The national minimum wage is €372 Euros a week. €92 Euros short of meeting basic needs, assuming that you're on full-time work. A number of sectoral wage agreements are based on the minimum wage usually a euro above it. That's, in short, not livable on. So what workers need is a pay rise. My question, will the government agree to accelerate the rise in minimum wage and sectoral agreements to link with what everybody is now uh, agreed on is a living wage? I might get the time to three minutes. Yeah. Deputy, a lot, of, a lot of questions there. I mean, I you know, I, I think your party understands the, uh, the housing challenges that we face very well. I mean, it was a, it was a Labour Party brief up until the middle of, tw middle of 2016. Uh, and we're talking about um, uh, challenges that, that have emerged because of a recession, uh, because house building essentially stopped in Ireland, apart from um, one-off houses across the countryside. We went from building you know, 90,000 housing units to building about 6,000. Um, uh, no, but the, the rental challenge that we face now uh, is directly linked to that supply challenge. Uh, uh, and, and that is why um, uh, this government introduced um, uh, rent pressure zones, uh, which have shown to be effective in terms of slowing down rental increases for existing rental tenancies. There's clearly an issue in relation to new rental tenancies that are coming in. Uh, and there is a distinction now in the numbers that the RTB have published between the two, uh, which I think is useful. Um, uh, there is a need to continue to build on the protections that we have for tenants, but we also need to be uh, honest about uh, uh, other elements of the data that we've seen this week, which is that we're seeing a reducing number of landlords. And without landlords, we don't get properties uh, that are available for rent. 
Uh, and so ultimately, this is about trying to ensure that we, as supply increases, uh, and we need to continue to accelerate that supply delivery, we protect tenants as best we can, but we also ensure that in doing that, we don't drive landlords out of the market. Uh, and uh, and that, is, that is a balance. Undoubtedly, our priority has been to protect tenants at a time when rental prices have been increasing too rapidly. Uh, but we have to be cognizant of the fact that we have a very unusual rental market in Ireland where the vast majority of landlords only own one property and are effectively not professional landlords. Uh, and that is why we need a strong RTB, that is why we have legislated to, to give them more powers and we will legislate to give them more again to make sure that landlords aren't abusing uh, the, the, la the lack of supply in terms of um, price gouging. Um, and we will continue to do that. And we will listen to other political parties in this House that have constructive proposals in that regard as well, as I think we have done to date. Um, but ultimately, uh, the pressures on the housing market generally, uh, and in particular on the rental market, are uh, as a result of a lack of supply, uh, which we are addressing uh, as part of a five-year strategy, which we're only halfway through. Uh, in relation to uh, sectoral wage agreements, you know, as you know, Deputy, we need to ensure that this government commits to wage increases, uh, in particular across the public sector, in line with what we can afford and in, in line with agreements that have been made. Uh, and to accelerate that uh, or to raise expectations around that uh, without actually having the estimates uh, to deliver that in terms of, of budgets would be highly irresponsible. Uh, and that's why um, a really important element of the Commons and Supply Agreement, for example, uh, does relate to, uh, uh, to, uh, to wage agreements uh, and ensuring that we can follow through on them in a way that is affordable to the state, the but also Howland. is as generous as possible uh, to the working public as well. Deputy Howland. Um, the Taunashal obviously doesn't agree with me that workers in Ireland actually now need a pay rise. It's good for the economy, and we've looked very, in very great detail across countries where there's always resistance to increases in the minimum wage um, from employers and other sectors. But in every case, it's good for the economy because it puts more money in circulation. And we have a very imbalanced wage structure in Ireland. We have good equalisation through social welfare uh, and taxation, but the base pay is grossly unequal by any European comparison. So can I ask the Thonish Day again? Acknowledging that we really need to raise the level of pay to the most vulnerable and lowest paid workers, will you undertake to start in the public service? We have established that a living wage right now is €11.90 Euro an hour. Will you undertake to seek to achieve that for all public sector workers so that at least in the area of work where you control directly yourself? we can be confident that people are at least earning a living wage. First of all, Deputy, as you will know, because you were involved in some of the decisions, um, uh, over the last seven years, I think there's been four minimum wage increases. Um, uh, and we continue uh, to, uh, uh, to look to the future in terms of further increases. Uh, we now have a, a, uh, a pay commission that makes recommendations independently whereby unions and employers input into that process. Uh, when we get recommendations in terms of minimum wage increases, we implement them. That's been the record of this government. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, and so uh, we, we um, have looked to ensure uh, that the, the Low Pay Commission, when they make recommendations, they take into account all of the issues that you've uh, been raising on, on the floor uh, today uh, and, and other inputs. They make recommendations to government uh, and we have implemented those recommendations. Um, uh, so uh, I think the important thing here uh, is that the country continues to be as generous as it can be as we move away from uh, the recession that we experienced a number of years ago, as the economy grows and expands, as we, employ, uh, as we approach full employment again. Uh, of course, people have an expectation that their quality of life will improve on the back of that. Okay, we're but we need on. to make sure that we don't get into a, a boom-bust cycle again by making commitments that will put this country under significant financial Can pressure. Deputy uh, and, uh, and getting that balance right is important, and you, of all deputies, I think, would understand that. Deputy Marino Sullivan.